in these the early days of Kerbal 2, where the locals live forever and never need to eat or drink, it only makes sense to populate every single surface in the solar system with a pair of these eternal life forms. So, I set out to build one giant spaceship to bring 32 residents to their new homes all across the system on a 48-year mission. I am brand new to Kerbal, and given some of the complexities with early stage game development and some of the bugs here, I opted to build my massive ship in orbit around Kerbin. After some vehicle tests, I settled on a massively over-engineered, extra-large Methalox fuel tank with seven vector engines and three Clydesdale solid fuel boosters to get my payloads to the ship's orbital radius for docking and construction. A large Methalox tank and Labradoodle orbital engines are used for rendezvous maneuvers, while solar-powered SAS and monopropellant-powered RCS thrusters fine-tune trajectory for docking. After building the hydrogen fuel tanks array, I brought in the four-seat Wanderer command pod and several configurations of two-seat tuna cans. Due to the sometimes brutal nature of the earliest versions of the game, I had a variety of successful dockings. Many were more of a battle than a ballet. I soon realized I was woefully shy of the necessary Delta V to attempt this mission and detached my hydrogen engine. I then added a very custom Spiritron hydrogen tank with four radial mounted docking ports to add more fuel to the outer edges of the spacecraft. All that's left to do is to transfer fuel from docking vehicles to the main ship and eject all the unnecessary components. I originally planned to travel inward in the system and quickly learned I would need a new plan in which I shed weight as fast as possible and use as little fuel as I could. This plan's going to take a lot of extra creativity. Let's see if we can make it work. In a constant effort to conserve fuel, we're going to slingshot off of every body we can, detach our landing vehicles, and complete retrograde orbital burn and landing sequence. And our first landing will be on Mun, with a nice view of the home planet Kerb in there in the background. Next, we head to Minmus using our eight radially mounted Methalox spider engines. Came in a little hot there, but we recovered the landing with all of our legs intact. And flag number two is down. Now, we already have inhabitants on the home planet of Kerbin, but in order to have a flag on every surface, I needed to send one back home. So, we used some parachutes for a pretty easy landing. Nice little mountainside, and get our flag at home, three down. Now that we have ejected those three pods, we are again symmetrical. So we're going to sling off of Mun's gravity to get us out of the sphere of influence of Kerbin, and head our way out towards Duna. In order to keep symmetry on the vehicle, I will just eject two pods from the nose configuration, landing the first on Duna's moon, Ike. We'll take a little hike so we get Duna in the background of this flag plant, and send the other vehicles down towards the planet. I don't have quite enough parachute for this atmosphere, but our wallaroo legs saved us from explosions. We are five flags down. It's time to shed some empty tank weight. Keeping the vehicle symmetrical, of course, so we can fly in a straight line. Drez is going to be tricky. I do not have the luxury of those Methalox engines, those Poodle engines for orbital burns. So, I'm going to have to put it out in front of the planet and basically accelerate so that I don't smash into it as the planet catches me. And success! Six flags down! Eject a couple empty tanks and make our way out to Joule. Now we're gonna need to catch an actual orbit with the entire spaceship on Joule because we have five moons to land on here. I don't want to burn up too much fuel here. We're gonna let the individual vessels do that. We're going to take off towards Tylo, which is one of our more difficult landings on this whole journey. 
these larger vehicles actually have two stages, uh, which is pretty necessary for this particular moon. It has no atmosphere and a very large amount of gravity. Tylo is tidal locked, so a nice view of Jewel there. Okay, let's send all three of these in together uh, and try to use our fuel as best we can. Kind of taking a guess here. I'm going to use my monopropellant puff engines here to get down to BOP. At this point during the Virgin updates, I ran into some strange issues uh, for the rest of my landings where I struggled to find a place to plant flags, but we managed to do it. Did some skating around. Now, I sure don't mind getting lucky, but I definitely did here. We swung off Tylo with both vehicles and managed to catch a near collision orbit with two separate moons. We'll go ahead and bring Lathe in first because we have an atmosphere on this inner moon of Jewel and we can use our parachutes. I got pretty close, had very little fuel to do anything about this, so I went ahead and swam this baby into the shore. That's nine flags. And I just had enough time to catch an orbit here around Vol and land this last of the three pods near these cool crystal structures. Oh, really hot on that one. Managed to separate from the vehicle just in case we exploded, but luckily both Kerbinauts survived the landing. Now I have pretty limited symmetry on the vehicle, so swung these around and put them back on my nose structure and ditched the last vehicle to head down into Jewel orbit. Paul is a really rad moon here at Jewel. I highly recommend that you explore this moon. We have a lot of mission left to do, so we're just going to plant this here in the ruins of Baradur. For the sake of symmetry and mass, we're going to eject here in Jewel orbit and take this vehicle all the way out to ELO with its two stages. And it looks like we have plenty of fuel left, so we are going to wait to ditch this last stage until we can watch it blow up on the surface of the planet. Use those radial puff engines for a little separation and... Oh yeah, that is so satisfying. Now I couldn't find anywhere to plant this on this planet, so I put it on top of the ship. At this point it is getting pretty exciting. Gonna leave Jules' sphere of influence and head way back into the center of the solar system, all the way down to our closest planet to the Kerbal Sun, and that is Moho. I do not have a ton of fuel on this vehicle, so hopefully I have enough to make a safe landing. Oh, I ran out of fuel right above the ground, but again those legs held out. Just had to make a kickstand with the solar panel to get out of the door, and we are flagged down. I do a little angular burn to line up with Eve, and then time to make the last ditches of my tanks. Perfect alignment on the docking, but somehow they got stuck sort of cockeyed. But if I ran the engine under 50%, my RCS thrusters could keep it enough on target to make it to where I needed to be. Back in orbit with our last planet, Eve. Let's go ahead and eject our pod. Send the tuna can down to intercept Gilly. Our last moon on this mission. With very little need for thrusters, we cowboyed this one in for a landing for our final moon flag. And finally for Eve, our last remaining celestial body to inhabit in the solar system. I don't have my parachute, so we're going to slam in on our colossals. Our giant solar panels save us from explosion, and we have done it. One flag, two bodies on every surface in the solar system.